How's it going, W Crew? It's me, your pal John, and I've got a relatively quick one here for you today. I just want to jump in and get to it. Uh, yesterday, the professor released a video that is talking about playing standard, and it's used as a bit of an introduction for new players, for returning players, but not necessarily brand new to Magic, although that was emphasized throughout the video, but essentially talking about being able to get new players into Standard, which is the most dynamic and the fastest changing format for Magic as well, especially in recent years with how many cards and sets are being printed. Standard is something that changes pretty rapidly. It has a quick rotation. It's a great format for people to be able to play. And for newer players who might not have a large card pool to pull from, it's a great way to get started in the game. I know when I started learning to play two decades ago at this point, the way that you learned to play was by going to your local game store. And the professor's video, which is a heartfelt, passionate plea to getting people into play standard, is advising you to do the same thing. In fact, he has some quotes here about standard that I'd like to read, and I want to make sure that I have them right. These are right near the start of his video. Standard is the most common constructed format for most local game stores for Friday Night Magic. If you have a local game store near you, chances are that they have a standard event that you can play in. I think those used to be true, and today, that's not true at all. That might seem shocking to many of you, and I'm sure many of you do in fact have a local game store that you can go and play standard. That's great, you should enjoy that, but if you're a new player, and especially if you follow the professor's advice through the video to use the Wizards of the Coast store locator on their website, the uh, link for that will actually be posted right in the description of this video, and it's in the professor's video, which is in the description here too. Uh, the reality is, if you live in the United States, there's a less than 50% chance that you live close to a local game store that is offering standard events. That might be shocking. That was shocking to me as I started working through it as well. And as I was watching the video, I, I have to be honest, I was sensing a bit of bullshit. I don't think the bullshit's on the professor's side, and I'll get to that. I think he's wrong about this, but I think he's wrong because he lives in a bit of a bubble. And that's an understandable bubble, and I want to give him the benefit of the doubt in this situation that he's not saying something incorrect on purpose or to profit from it, although that's possible. I think he's saying something incorrect because this is something that's changed quickly in the Magic the Gathering community. Let me go through the math a little bit for you. I'm a data analyst. I'm a math guy. When I sense a bit of bullshit, I tend to go into that quickly to see if I can uncover what's going on. So let's start with the United States' population overall, which is about 330 million people. To help clarify for some of this, I do want to explain that I don't live in the United States. All, all I'm using is public data here for that, not that you have to live in the United States to have this data. It's a pretty easy Google search. I live in Canada, and I live in the city called Halifax in Nova Scotia. Uh, the reason that I think that's relevant is when I first heard the information from the professor, one of the first things that I did was go and search for my local area. I don't go to local game stores anymore. Uh, I used to. I stopped buying as many cards relatively recently, and me and my wife are trying to get back into it. Me as a returning player, and her as a brand new player who has no experience in playing Magic the Gathering at all. This would be exactly the type of information we'd be looking for, and I was excited to find out that our local game stores would still be running standard events. For some data perspective, Halifax is a rapidly growing city. We grew about 6% last year, which is pretty huge for us. It's got about 450,000 people, so let's call it half a million just for sake of argument for some easy math. So a little small for a city, but much bigger than most of the cities that the U.S. actually lives in, that the people in the United States live in. In addition to that, we're a fairly young city. And for income-wise and for the cost of goods, we're pretty much at the Canadian average, which is a little less than the U.S. average, but we have other expenses we don't have to pay for, so your disposable income kind of evens out. Uh, as an important note for Magic the Gathering players, Halifax has about six universities in total, and the number of students enrolled at those universities is close to 10% of our population. Why that's important is Magic the Gathering players are more likely to be university students and in that age demographic than just about anyone else. So it's a young city that probably punches above its weight class for people who would be interested in Magic the Gathering. So I would expect, based on the professor's information and based on Wizards of the Coast's information through their store locator, that there would be half a dozen, maybe more, local game stores that would be running events semi-regularly. I should have the pick of the litter when I go to my local game store. It turns out Halifax does have a one singular local game store 
that is running standard events. We have about 10 local game stores, but only one, according to the Wizard Store locator, is running standard events. They run a Friday Night Magic event, which actually looks like it's great. It's at a location called the Deck Box, and uh, the entry cost is $5, way cheaper than what the professor was thinking. You also, regardless of your record, get your $5 back. So he is 100% right on game stores not making money off of this. That game store is not making any money. They're losing money. If you have a winning record, you just get prize money. If you're a new player who's looking to start out, it looks like, based on the Wizards Play Network description that they're in, because they are a premium store, for new players, they actually even have deck loan programs, where they'll just let you play with a deck for the day so that you can get out and experience standard. It looks like in Halifax, we're very lucky. But is that the typical experience? And the answer, from what I can find through some searching, is no. It's not the expected answer at all. I'll pop up the data that we found here for Halifax, but as you can see, using Wizards Play Network, with the filter set to only show standard events, and looking at 50 miles, it still stays in miles even though we use kilometers here, it doesn't matter, that's basically the entire area of Halifax, even if you were to pick rural areas outside of Halifax. There is one. You can go to one store, one day a week, to play standard events. As you can see from the map, there are lots of other local game store locations. They just don't run standard events. And that brings me back to my data here. The U.S. has about 330 million people in total. That's 100% of the population. If I look at rural areas, and the way I'm defining rural areas is the same way the U.S. Census does, anything that is under 50,000 people is considered a town, so it's not a city for this. The reason I'm using that cutoff is... If you live with less than 50,000 people in your local community, in your town, in your something smaller than a city, because that's sort of the cutoff that they use, I would believe that it's likely you don't have a local game store. And the professor addressed that in his video as well. If you don't have a local game store, you'd be able to play standard by going to Magic the Gathering Arena or to Magic the Gathering Online. They are not perfect options. They are certainly different options than your paper collection. It has some limitations, but... Unfortunately, there is some limitations in living in a smaller locality. This is one of them. The good news for the United States, and I'm sure this is fairly typical across Canada, this is probably typical for Europe and for other countries where Magic the Gathering would be played, about 87% of the population lives in a community of more than 50,000 people. From some random searching, because I did pick some towns like Carson City, Nevada, we'll pop that up as an example. Carson City, Nevada has about 57,000 people, pretty small, it's one of the smallest official cities or metropolitan areas in the United States. They have local game stores. I had two, I believe, if I remember from the map, correct me if I'm wrong, Grace. So they have local game stores. If you're in a small, relatively small town like that, you can go find a local game store. I'm sure many other smaller communities than 50,000 people also have local game stores. But that wasn't the question the professor actually stated in his video. The idea would be that if you have a local game store near you, as 87% of the U.S. population does, chances are they have standard events for you. And here's where the math gets wonky. I said in a city with over 2 million people, there's about 161 million Americans that live that way, which is a little less than half the population. It's 49% or rounds up to 49%. Why did I pick 2 million people? Because if you look at the cities that have less than 2 million people, there is a greater than 50% chance that while they have local game stores, they do not have a single local game store running standard events. I, I know, that's shocking. I'll pop a few of them up here. You've got Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee, you've heard of that city. They don't have any standard events running. You've got Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I, actually, I want to correct that. If we look at the map here, Nashville, Tennessee does say they have one standard event running, but actually you can look at the title of the event, and it says it's a commander event. It's just coded as standard, so someone put that in the system wrong. You can look at Tulsa, Oklahoma, another city you've probably heard of. Not a single store within a 50-mile radius is running a standard event. Not for the next two months. Can you imagine if you were a new player and you came out and you watched the professor's video, which explained how to get into standard, and did a decent job of that, all things considered, and you went and you searched on the store locator that he told you to search on, and you looked in your city and you're saying, surely there's a local game store, and you see, yes, there's lots of local game stores. I live in a city, of course there are. And you don't see any standard events. How's that going to make you feel to go out and learn to play Magic the Gathering or get back into Magic the Gathering without any standard events? 
The professor should have seen this, and I explained earlier in the video, I think he's living in a bubble. I'll pop another one up on the screen, which is Portland, Oregon. That's where the professor lives. It's in the Portland area anyways. I, I don't know his specific address, nor would I give it out. That's ridiculous. But he lives in the Portland, Oregon area. For the record, that's about two and a half million people if you look at the metropolitan area. As you can see, tons and tons and tons of local game stores. Portland, Oregon is one of the highest density areas for local game stores for Magic the Gathering in particular. And many of the stores here, many of them, probably a few dozen, are running standard events on a regular basis. So if you were the professor and you were searching on the store locator to look for standard events, I can understand why you would see tons of them. They're just available everywhere. I'm sure as you frequent your local game store, you would see nothing but players learning to play standard, returning to standard, coming in and collecting cards to play standard, selling them to other players, getting involved with their friend groups. That's great. And if you live in Portland, you should take advantage of that as well. But if you're one of the 327 million or so Americans who don't live in Portland, Oregon, your experience is going to be very different. And if you were pushed to the store locator by YouTubers like the professor who were stating, this is where you search to find your standard games, you're going to be very disappointed if you find that you live in a city that should have them, but doesn't. Okay, what do we do from there? That's a fair question, but we can't fix that problem. First of all, I need to know if this is actually a problem. This leads me to my next hunt that I'm going to have to do. The first question that I would have is, is this a problem with Wizards of the Coast store locator? Or is this a problem with local game stores no longer running those events? My first guess is that the store locator is wrong. That's just my guess. Wizards of the Coast made it. I don't expect that they're putting a lot of money into that because I personally don't think they benefit at all from having lots of events. I don't think it's something that they're paying that much attention to. I think they care about selling cards and making money because they're a business. I talk about that frequently. I think that's what they're doing, and I don't think they really care if people are going to local game stores and playing in events, whether they're standard or other kinds of events. I think they care if it's selling them cards. And I think they've made the decision that is not selling them cards. But it could be an error. Maybe the store locator doesn't get the information from the local game stores to be able to update it. Maybe the pandemic threw it off by a lot. That would make sense, too. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use Halifax, the city in which I live, as my example of typical American city. I know it's in Canada. Forget it. At some point, you guys will take us over anyways, and then we'll be in America, so that's fine. So what does that mean now that we have that information? Well, it could mean a few different things. I don't know yet, and I'm going to keep digging until I find out. My fear is that this figure, the 49%, is a more accurate representation of the number of local game stores that have decided not to hold standard events anymore. The reason that I think that is we are part of lots of Reddit groups, of Facebook groups that would be geared towards new Magic players, both as a way to gather content that new players or people who are interested in Magic are asking so that we can add that to our own film content too. That's something that me and Grace are doing a lot of. In addition to that though, we're seeing people asking how you would learn to play Magic the Gathering so that we can have that for our own information. When people are asking those questions, do you know how often we've seen the suggestion that they should go to their local game store and learn to play by playing standard? Zero times. These are in all the different groups that we're in. I'll post some examples up on the screen here as well of questions that have been asked. The advice given is not to go to your local game store and play. Sometimes the advice given is to play Magic the Gathering Arena, where it is the most common way to play standard now. Here's my fear. I would imagine, and I am using the word fear correctly because I recognize for this game, I'm a bit of an addict too, like the rest of you. I imagined that it was still possible to go to your local game store and learn to play standard. That would be good for Wizards of the Coast because you would buy cards in person, but Wizards of the Coast might sell plenty of cards without standard players. Maybe they even sell more cards, not to local game stores, but themselves directly through Amazon or through the distributors that they sell to, that's just what they really care about. And then they get players again through those hybrid methods by getting them to play standard on Arena. This could be really bad for local game stores. And it seems like our best and brightest, the people that are leading the Magic community, didn't know this. They didn't go around and search to find out, are local game stores actually still, in most of the cities across the United States, across the world, running standard events? Because Wizards of the Coast's store locator says, no, they're not. It's not the most common way to play. 
commander is, and that has its own benefits, but without selling lots of standard cards, the death of the game could be coming soon. Or it could be something more simple than that. Another option would be that it's not signaling anything other than shifting gameplay, and local game stores are doing just fine hosting commander events instead. Maybe they even make more money, and maybe Wizards of the Coast makes more money than that. Great. If that's the case, then it's a problem with standard, and the professor should fix that in his video by saying standard is not the most popular format that's played on Friday Night Magic. Maybe that's true now as well. Maybe he just lives in a bubble in Portland where it is the most popular format. That's fine if that's the case, but it's not the reality for the rest of us. Another option that's even more simple than that is maybe Wizards of the Coast doesn't update their store locator. That's the next thing that I can eliminate for a question. I'm going to use my city, Halifax, as an example to go back through the actual local game stores that are here and talk to them directly. Do those stores offer standard events? Do they run Friday Night Magic and they just have not bothered to tell Wizards of the Coast? Have they told Wizards of the Coast and Wizards of the Coast doesn't care? Maybe Wizards of the Coast is even in a conspiracy where they're trying to hide that from players. I doubt it, but maybe. One thing that we could eliminate fairly quickly and that you could all help with as well as viewers by first of all sharing, subscribing, and liking this video and leaving your comments about your experiences in your local area. Do you have standard that's actually happening where you live? If you do, great, where is that? What are your local game stores doing differently than the other ones? Because most of the ones where I live are not running standard events. I'm going to first talk to those local game stores and find out why are they not running standard events. Because if they're aware that they could be, if they're aware that players want to play in standard events and they're not running them because it's not profitable from them or maybe because they're not getting the support from Wizards of the Coast that they need, that could be a big problem for the game. If there's something else going on, it'd be better if we as players know that too. Until then, and until this next video where we get to uncover that, I hope that this was informative for you, and I would encourage you, if you're looking to jump into play standard, do more than just check the store locator, because the store locator, at this point, is either inaccurate, or the YouTubers that we're listening to are inaccurate. Don't just trust me, go and search for yourself, and see whether we're in a bigger problem than we thought.